So, let's talk for a bit about DMC. If you would have asked me about three weeks ago about what I thought about the upcoming DMC game, I probably would have said something like, Oh, I don't mind, I only play the games for the gameplay. But, I don't own a suit, and I'm not famous, so nobody asked me. Fast forward to now time, the new DMC, brand new, just came out, all shiny and new, and yet, I'm still scratching my head over something. The combat is tight enough to have been fixated by a sonic screwdriver, but there is something in the equation that just puts the entire experience off a bit. For those of you who haven't figured it out yet, those two things are CHARACTERIZATION AND TONE. So there's this guy named Christopher Nolan, who decides to reimagine all the Batman films. They come out, the world's in love with them, the Batman voice is now a thing, and Christopher Nolan can now buy as many Catwomans as he wants. She's my he changed the franchise just a little bit, and everyone seemed alright with the entire idea. Yet when Ninja Theory does the same thing, they're met with an uproar. Why do you think that is? It's because Dante's a huge asshole. It's because while no one has changed the world that Batman takes place in, the ideas and the characters are all still relatively the same. This isn't the case with DMC. Let's take a look at Dante. You know, the main character. The main character Dante, not that one, but that, that Dante. Take a look at that. Now he still uses ebony, ivory, and rebellion. The very basic trimmings of the old Dante are all still there, but he has been changed at the core, and this is most apparent in why he chooses to fight Mundus. 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 What did they fucking do that? Yamato. 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 Dante goes to fight the demons. The demons. The demons, not for mankind, but for his own personal vendetta. You could argue that he only wanted to kill Mundus in the original for personal curiosity. You'd be fucking wrong. Go play the game, go to sleep. Go play the game, go to sleep. Go play the game. Go play the game. This basic fact outlines the entire new Dante. He's different, and it's obvious. He's not noble, he isn't clever, and he doesn't give a damn about strawberry sundaes. The OG DT always put the facade of someone who didn't care, but it was just a facade. Is your name Dante, son of Sparta? What did you hear that? The game is called Devil May Cry, not Devil Gonna Cry. More of a loner type. Trust issues, work alone, that kind of thing. The older Dante was too cool, what Bayonetta was too sexy. Sure, he was cool, but in a way that was so goom go over the top's top. This guy just seems to carry himself differently, like he thinks he's more clever than he really is. Just be careful. You can get rough in there. I like it rough. Is this really going to work? He doesn't seem to care. This made him a rather uncompelling character who I didn't really feel any connection towards. And that's a problem. Do you think you'd want to find James's dumb wife if you didn't care anything about James? Or would you help Heather if you weren't compelled to learn about her past? Or would you help out that one guy to find his daughter? Wait a minute. No, you wouldn't. You'd be aggravated and pissed off. You need to have some connection to the character. Every time it seems like you're going to have some chummy moment with Dante, he spits right in your face. Oh! Hmm? Not a million years. Oh. There's also no apparent character arc for Dante. You see, when a character changes a viewpoint during the story, he's called a dynamic character. When he doesn't, he's called a politician. They try to shift Dante into a dynamic character, but there's no natural progression of it. He just seems to decide that he's humanity's protector now. Why? I don't know. The bleach got to his brain, I guess. It just seems to happen for no reason so the developer can say, No, 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 he's deep, you see? He's changed. But since there's no path for the audience to follow, it just seems like someone just flipped the hero switch in his brain, and now he's, a, now he's good. Come to think of it, a lot of things happen for no reason. This party's getting crazy. Let's rock. <laughs> so 
So about two thirds of the way through, Virgil shoots this lady. Why? Why does that happen? Why is it? I, because he had to. The hell did you do that for? I had to. Or something. I mean, there's a whole plot where she's carrying Mundus' son, but you fought him earlier, even though he's right there. No, no, she's in there, right but there. No, she's not there, there. He's, and then he's she's in, in there, there, right there. <laughs> the game obviously wants you to feel bad for this lady. Look, look, look how, look how sad she is. Look how sad she is. But it's hard to feel any remorse for her when you know she just got, you just got done fighting her. No, baby, suck me in, pull me back in. Why even have this scene in the game? What purpose does it serve other than the shock factor? You could argue that it's when Virgil starts to show his true colors, but even he seems shocked that he killed her. Any sort of somberness is instantly shattered in the next action bit anyway. What this game is missing is tone. You can't instantly jump from funny moments to OOPS YOU'RE DEAD back to action. And that's what DMC is at its heart, an action game. Sure, you can have heavy moments thrown in, just like the uh, uh, Uncharted games, but it has to flow all together. If you don't, then you'll leave the player sitting there trying to soak in all that just happened with no chance to. You see, you need moments to let the heavy hitting things sink in. The Walking Dead game is a great example of this. You can really feel the hills and valleys of the somber moments in the action sequences. It plays out nicely. And you're impacted more because you have time to soak it all in. <sighs> Another very important thing in a story-driven experience is a theme. A theme is an idea of the work that can be summed up into just one word. For instance, the theme of the Uncharted games is... Adventure! Adventure! Yeah! The theme of the Silent Hill 2 game is... Acceptance! And the theme of DMC is... Brotherhood? Bonding? No, 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 because you fight Virgil in the end. Um... Revenge? No, no, because you fight Virgil after you beat Mundus. I guess if I had to put a theme down, gun to my head, I would say duty, because it more or less is Dante's rise to being the protector of Earth. But that doesn't really shape up until the very last bit. Oh well! Now, when asked by Mundus why Dante's doing all these shenanigans, he claims that it was all for freedom. It was for freedom. But I'm not buying it, Ninja Theory. It seems that in the end there, things are actually worse off because of Dante's actions. And Mundus actually makes a pretty good point about humanity. And what would mankind do with freedom, do you suppose? Because when I arrived, they had it. And what do you think they did with it? They fought. They killed. They starved. I brought prosperity. Structure. It actually shows in the beginning that Mundus saved the world's banking system. So, what was Dante actually saving at all? I don't know. Sure it wasn't Strawberry Sundays. Hey guys, thanks a lot for watching. Especially you. In a few moments, some more videos are gonna come up. It'd be great if you watch them. Yeah! It'd also be great if you subscribe. Feel free to also watch us blunder wildly through Twitter and Facebook descriptions below. Or over there, wherever YouTube decided to put them today. Thanks again for watching. See you later.